Stop by Next Step members to pick up your copy. We're also selling them for $5. Uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and, and just do that. If $5 is too much for you, I'll buy you one personally um, because I think it's going to help you get everything out of it as you bring it every Sunday. Um, it has a blank side on the right side, the scriptures on the left. You can take notes, you can underline, you can jot things down. And I just would encourage you to, uh, to do that and get the most out of Sunday mornings. Uh, we chose the book of Acts because it's a continuation of the gospel of Luke. Luke wrote the book of Acts and then uh, the book, uh, the gospel of Luke, and then it literally, it's a sequel. It's, it's the second movie. And, the, and uh, you, you know, just like you wait, can't wait for the next Marvel movie to come out, um, you know what? This one came out, and we're going to go right into the book of Acts. Um, we're going to kind of focus this morning on developing the main theme. And we'll kind of, we're going to reference a lot of the sub-themes because you can kind of um, find out what a, a main theme is in the New Testament by reading the first chapter and the last chapter. If you do that, you, you, I, I'm confident you'll begin to identify a couple themes that, hey, um, this is what this book is about. And that's important is because that main theme, um, every other theme that you find out in the entire book, whatever New Testament book that is, falls underneath the main theme. And so um, we're going to focus on the main theme of, of Acts this morning. Now, how many of you have a difficult time sharing your faith? If you're watching online, type in the chat feature, it's tough. And those of you who are in this uh, gathering, go ahead and raise your hand if, it, if you struggle ra- uh, sharing your faith. Okay, I see hands, hands going up. Um, I want to I take a little pulse, and you can take the survey with us online. Um, you could also take it here in the gathering. Why don't you pull out your cell phones, and if you text um, wine.fam330 to that number, it'll lock you in the survey. And the more people that participate, the more fun it is because we have a more realistic pulse of, of our church family. And so if you're online, do the same. Text wine.fam330 to that number, 22333, and it will lock you in. You'll get an automated response. And then I want you to answer this question. How would you describe yourself when it comes to sharing your faith? And then just put A, B, C, or D in there. Would you put A, I share my faith consistently. B, I share my faith occasionally. C, I I want to share my faith, but I'm just fearful and worried a lot, whatever it may be. So I, I, you know, don't. Or D, nah, I don't plan on sharing my faith. And uh, we want you to be honest, and this is all anonymous. I will have no idea when I read it out. At the end of the service, we're just going to read out the statistics of, of the averages of what, what came in. And so um, Christians don't share their faith for many, many reasons. And they're going to keep that on the screen here um, for another minute, so don't, so don't panic. Uh, some are afraid to share their faith because they're afraid, what if I get asked a question I can't answer? What do I do then? In other words, a feeling of inadequacy. Some don't share their faith because they don't want to be made fun of or they don't want to stand out. What if I say something and someone just, they they grill me, they turn on me, and all of a sudden now I'm the the butt end of the jokes. Or in other uh, other words, you know, I, I want to fit in and don't want to ruffle feathers. Still, some don't share their faith because they don't want to do it wrong. And perfectionism kind of kind of hinders them from talking to others about Jesus. Some say, well, I don't share my faith because I'm an introvert, and it's not easy or natural for me to talk to people, so I just wait for them to talk to me, and no one's ever come and asked me about Jesus, so therefore I don't talk about Jesus. Others have had a bad experience. Maybe someone shared faith with them, or they shared their faith, and they're like, listen, I don't want to be like this guy. I am the Almighty, Revelation chapter 1. I am either living them with death or all them alive forevermore, Jesus said. I have the keys to death and hell. I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian. 31 years ago, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Sometime after that, uh, I was convinced that I needed to be a, more of a public witness. At that point on, I realized that uh, preaching on the streets 
what the people want to hear or don't want to hear, uh, I'm able to get the good news of the gospel to a lost and dying world. The Bible says that you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself, and the truth is not in you. I'm, I'm a salesman. I work for a company in uh, uh, Springfield, uh, Massachusetts. I now work part-time about 30 hours a week because I'm in my middle age now. I figure it's time to slow down <laughs> at 71. About six to eight hours is my average I preach in the streets. And that's enough to make me hoarse sometimes. <laughs> and irritate enough. So, you know, and we see those people, and you saw that one lady, it's funny, she um, blocked her eyes from seeing him, but she still took the track. Wasn't that interesting? I, I, I was like, oh, she's going to walk around and buy him. She's like, no, I'll take it. I'm just not going to look at you. Uh, you know, we don't want to be like, like that guy. And whatever the reason is, I think we could all relate to this reality that we, w we could probably use some assistance and help when it comes to sharing our faith. When it comes to being a witness, though, however, you and I are, are naturals at it. We are naturals at it. I mean, you just find someone who's a diehard Star Wars fan, and they can't help but tell you about the new thing released on Disney+. Plus. Or they can't, the Marvel fan can't wait to tell you about this, the Spider-Man movie that just came out and how amazing it was and, and how there was, you know, well, I don't want to spoil it, but, you know, uh, oh, I'm so tempted, but I'm going to hold it back. All right. when you ever, whenever you see an amazing sports play, you're like, you can't wait the next day to tell your friends or your family about what happened. Or you go to a new restaurant and the food is amazing. I, I mean, just the best food you ever have. You tell people online. You tell people in person. You go to that concert that is just reminds you of your, of your teen years or your young adult years back in the, in the day. And you post pictures about it. And you tell everyone about it. And, and the question is why? Because we love sharing good news. We do. We love sharing good news. We have a hard time containing good news. Matter of fact, some of you, when you know there's a good secret or surprise coming, it kills you to hold it in. And like, like you just want to let, let the cat out of the bag because it is such good news. The other person is going to love it so much. And this morning, we're going to see that the overarching theme through the entire book of Acts is being a witness to the good news. The exciting part of this is that even though we have fears, you and I already have practiced at sharing good news. We already are accustomed to sharing good news. And we're going to see that when it comes to the book of Acts, that the overarching theme is being a, a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God. And over and over again, we see this throughout the entire book of Acts. And we're going to look at it this morning. I have a week at Wyandotte Family Church. We have like a main slogan. It's like the theme throughout the message. You can repeat this with me this morning. Say, I will share the good news. Type that in the chat for me. I will share the good news. We're going to start off Acts chapter 1, verse 1. So the very beginning of your Acts Journal Bible. Go ahead and open that up. Get out your pen, your highlighter. Get out whatever you want to get, your pencil. And it says this. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had been, uh, given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. So once again, we see Luke opens up this book. and he, In the introduction, he mentions Theophilus, which is very cool because it's the exact same person he opens up with when he opened up the Gospel of Luke. And once again, as I mentioned a couple years ago, we don't know really much about Theophilus other than in Luke, he starts off with the most excellent Theophilus, which suggests that he might have been a person of prestige or rank. And he reminds us that he had written the first book, which was Luke. We just finished that series last year. And in that first book, he shares everything that Jesus taught, everything that uh, the miracles that Jesus did. And now... Um, he's going to continue on. Now, the Gospel of Luke was written around the 60s A.D., give or take some time there, which, by the way, is pretty amazing and pretty close because um, our schools teach literature about Alexander the Great and different ancient um, 
uh, histori historical figures that there's literally hundreds of years from when the person lived to when the person was written about. And we have gospel accounts of Jesus just 30 years after his life, which is unheard of, unparalleled when it comes to ancient writing. The book of Acts was written somewhere between the 70s and 80s, not 1980s, but, uh, but just the 70s and 80s. And I want to show you a little timeline here and why this is important. I showed this a couple years ago. But you're going to see in the timeline that, um, see where it says 70, the destruction of the temple? That is very, very important because um, one of the scholars, Craig Keener, um, says this. He says that majority of scholars agree that Acts was written in the 70s, 70s and 80s because when the temple was destroyed, that decimated the courage, the hope, the vibrancy of, of thousands of Jews and new Christ followers. Because to the Jew, the temple represented the presence of God. To the Jews, the temple was everything. And even the new converts to Christianity that were following the, the way, they still had an affinity for the temple. And now that the temple was destroyed, it was, it was like a gut check to the faith of the new believers. And so Paul, uh, I mean, excuse me, Luke is now writing the, the accounts of Acts and showing the new believers that, hey, the temple doesn't reside anymore in brick and mortar, but actually you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so this was a perfect timing for the, the, the book of Acts to be introduced to believers about what was taking place. And then we, we go on to read in Acts 1-3, it says this about Jesus. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So Luke brings, uh, highlights that Jesus, after he rose again, hung out with people for 40 days, teaching them about the kingdom of God, proving to him that he was alive, probably because it took 40 days for them to finally believe that he is alive. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 6, if you want to jot that in your Luke journal, I mean Luke journal Bible, your Acts journal Bible, in 1 Corinthians 15, 6, Paul talks about how Jesus appeared to over 500 um, to show them and to prove to them that he was alive. And, I'm, and, I, and this is important as we're laying the foundation of everything we're going to read in Acts is because Jesus didn't just appear to one person. It wasn't just like one person was like, hey, Jesus is alive, you know, believe me, let's go, let's start a new movement. Um, Jesus appeared to a whole lot of people, showing them convincing proofs that he didn't just die on that cross, but he rose again. And... This is important because the resurrection of Jesus is a secondary main theme married to the main theme of witness. Because the question is, well, if witness is the main theme of the book of Acts, what are we a witness to? That Jesus is alive. That he is the king. That he is Lord. And, and so what you're going to see is that you're going to see about the resurrection a lot. It's a main theme throughout the book of Acts. And uh, Pastor Brian Ledbeck will say that the kingdom of God or resurrection are synonymous in the book of Acts. And we're going to see that over and over again. But if Luke is writing this, how trustworthy is Luke? I mean, how do we know Luke is telling the truth? How do we know he isn't just making this up? Well, Sir William Ramsey was at Oxford uh, University in England, was one of history's greatest archaeologists. He was an atheist. And he wanted to disprove the Bible, and he wanted to disprove the book of Acts. And so he purposely did archaeological digs to show that Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, was not accurate and could not be trusted. Because if he could prove that, then he could prove that the content was not trustworthy either. But after 25 years of doing digs, instead of disproving Acts, he actually came to prove that Luke was one of the most credible historians who's ever written. And because of that, he actually became a Christ follower. See, Jesus proved that he was alive. Yes, he died on the cross, but he rose again victorious. That is the good news. Right? He tore the veil in the temple from top to bottom so everyone could have access to the presence of God. That is good news. 
He rose again, and he was now ascending to the right hand of the Father, where he was promising that he was going to come again. And since he kept his first promise of rising from the dead, we know he's going to keep his second promise of returning for his believers, and that is good news. And so that is the good news that his disciples are called to go and share. And when I say disciples, I'm not talking about the 11. Then we're going to find out they're going to add one back to make it 12. I'm talking about you and I. We're part of the disciples. We're just like them. Everyone say, I will share the good news. So let's dive real quick, um, a little bit deeper into, that's kind of oxymoron. Let's dive quick, a little bit deeper, right? I don't know if that can happen. But Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says this. But you will receive power, and we'll, we'll get to this verse again in a couple weeks, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my what? Witnesses. You'll be my witnesses. Type that in again on the chat. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So we see that the resurrection and the Holy Spirit are both sub-themes that support the main theme of being a witness. So, so the Jesus is saying, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to give you power. And it wasn't just so we could feel good or we could have goosebumps. He says, I'm going to give you my power so you could go and do what I've called you to do, which is be my, my witness. You're going to, and it's my Holy Spirit that's going to empower you to be bold. It's my Holy Spirit that's going to empower you to step out of your comfort zone. It's my Holy Spirit that's going to empower you to do signs and wonders and, and use my gifts so that not for any other reason but to go and be a witness. Say, well, that's nothing new. We actually read something similar to this. If you remember back in Luke chapter 24, verses 48 through 49, at the very end of the Gospel of Luke, Luke wrote, you are, uh, Jesus said, you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I'm setting the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So Luke ends his gospel with telling his disciples they're going to be witnesses, but they need to be clothed with power. And then he starts off Acts with the main theme of, hey, you're going to be receive the Holy Spirit so you can be my witness. You can go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And we see back the last chapter of the book of Acts. This is important. So we looked at Acts 1-8 about being a witness. And then look what happens at the very end of Acts. Acts 28-23. It says about Paul. It says, when they had appointed a day for him, they came to him as, at his lodging in greater numbers. From morning till evening, he expounded to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. And then a few verses later, it ends the book of Acts by saying this proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. So we see in the beginning of Acts and we see the end of Acts that everything is built upon this foundation of proclaiming, of testifying, of witnessing, call it whatever word you want to call it, but as a disciple that God is going to send his Holy Spirit to empower us to be a witness. Our calling, our, the known will of God for our lives is this. Every single one of us, regardless of our gifts, regardless of our talents, regardless of our temperament, introvert, extrovert, it doesn't matter. Every single one of us are called to be a witness of the resurrected Jesus Christ. That's what this book is about. Another cool caveat, if you want to jot this down in your, in your external Bible, is the Bible Project um, highlights this cool little structural dynamic. And so, it, I don't know if you ever thought about this before, but when you think about someone writing the book of the Bible, like they, they, they weren't sitting there going, hey, I want to add a book to the Bible, okay? So I'm, I'm going to just write Acts, and it's going to be really cool. It's going to go right, it's going to be, it was, it was something the Lord inspired them to do, but they were smart. I, I mean, if you look at this, Acts 1.8, we just read that. Jesus says, you know, I, I'm, I will, I'm going to send my spirit to empower you to be my witness, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the other ends of the earth. And that's really kind of how Acts is designed. Acts chapter 1 through 7 takes place in Jerusalem. And it talks about how the early church grew in Jerusalem and how it began to flourish, but then persecution, which is another thub, thub scene. Look at that. 
sub-theme of the, the book of Acts. Um, and then because of persecution, they had to leave Jerusalem. And then Acts 8 through 12, guess where they go? To Ju Judea and Samaria. And then they begin to spread the gospel there. They become witnesses there. And then we see in Acts 13 and on, Paul's three missionary journeys, where he spreads it to the other ends of the earth. And so the very thing that Jesus said, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, is kind of how the, the book of Acts is structured and written. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Very, very, very cool and strategic. Now, whether Luke did that strategically or that was the Holy Spirit, you know, just being strategic on him and he was clueless, I, we have no idea. But that's kind of how it worked up. And, and so uh, what we see here also, um, I want to go back and talk about, well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll, we'll do that next week. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm so excited. I've been reading Acts for a very long time, so I'm super excited about this. Now, uh, how the book of Acts ends is Paul knows that he's walking into a trap. He knows that he's about to get arrested. He knows he's about to get persecuted. And he doesn't uh, want to stop. He keeps being a witness. And one of the commentaries brought this out that when you look at Paul's life and kind of his journey, it's very similar to Jesus' journey. Uh, what happens. And it's because as Christ followers, we're supposed to follow Christ's example. And so why, are, why is being a witness so important? Well, being a witness is so important because I want to show you a picture on the screen. And this isn't Florida. Sorry, Mark Nemeth. Um, but this picture on the screen is the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is the Dead Sea because um, nothing living is in, there's nothing living in it. Because the, the salt content is too high and it, the fish and stuff can't survive in it. Um, but another thing about it, it doesn't have an outlet. It only has an inlet. And so it receives, but it doesn't pour out. And so nothing living can be in there. And if you and I want to live an abundant life in Christ, then being a witness is what we're called to do. And here's how cool God is. When he designs things to happen, not only is it spread the truth of Jesus Christ and the good news, but it blesses us as well because we need an outlet. And to kind of help illustrate this, I need a quick uh, volunteer who doesn't uh, mind blowing up a balloon. It's a really simple um, object lesson. I just need someone, and uh, I know a lot of hands are up right now. I'm going to try to choose one. I'm going to try to choose one. I'm going to try to choose one. Okay. Um, I see Colleen. Come on, give Colleen a round of applause. Get, she's come back up here. All right. And so I have a balloon here but, and in a bottle, and I want you to try to just uh, it's like already set up on there. So you just try to blow it up. You don't have to pull your mask down, or maybe not. Yeah. Try it one more time. Come on. No. Okay. All right. Let's see. Stay, don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. All right. So she tried to blow this up, but if you notice, there's no outlet in this bottle. And so this is very dangerous. Okay. If I cut myself, we'll stop the live stream for a second. But. Uh, I, I got a shaky right hand, and I got a knife in my hand, but I'm, I'm going to try to cut. I'm the medical field. Oh, you're the medical field. Okay. I, cut, yeah, cut towards yourself. I was told this, 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 would, this would cut easily, but I'm afraid. Okay, now I'm getting in there. Uh, woo! That was close. That was close. You guys, start praying right now for me. Uh, it's not cutting. All right, we'll see if that works. Let's see if that's enough. We'll see if that's enough. All right, all right. Now let's see if you can go ahead and you're full blood out here. Yeah, look at that. All right, give a round of applause. Get a round of applause. Thank you, Colleen. And I didn't cut myself, so it's a win-win. All right. So, so as you as you saw, once. I, I put just even a little bit of an outlet in there for the air to flow, the balloon was able to increase. And the same way is um, in our own lives spiritually is that we are called to be witnesses. And so many um, Christ followers over the course of time struggle with spiritual boredom. They struggle with uh, um, losing spiritual passion and vibrancy. And um, the 
one of the main contributors, I wonder if it could be because um, being a witness has become optional for believers. It's become delegated to people who might have more charisma or people who are extroverts. When in all reality, we're going to dive into this book and realize that not only does God call us to be a witness, but here's the cool thing. He empowers us to be a witness. He doesn't just ask us to do something and say, figure it out. He literally empowers us in many ways, shapes, or form. We're going to see how prayer is a huge part of it. The Holy Spirit. Baptism is a theme we're going to see. Supernatural activity. Tons of supernatural activity in the, in the whole book of Acts. All of it empowering us, God's people, to be witnesses. I want to check out the results of the text message survey on the screen here. And what we see here is we see 17% share their faith consistently. We see 75% share occasionally. And 8% so they, they would like to, but they're fearful or, or worried. And I understand it. We've all been there. And so um, that is uh, very cool to see. And uh, how could you imagine just what God could do if the 17% just began to grow in all of our lives? And we began to just, it became a natural rhythm of, of our lives. And so as we go through this book of Acts, uh, we're going to learn um, and experience God. We're going to be challenged. We're going to be encouraged. And we're going to um, learn to be witnesses for the good news of Jesus Christ. Everyone say, I will share the good news. You can check out this closing video. bow your head and close your eyes and we're going we're gonna to end with a worship song and if you've never crossed the line to relationship with Jesus and you're watching online or you're in the gathering, would love to pray with you. Jesus didn't just die on that cross but he rose again and he's alive and he wants each and every one of his children to know him and if you don't know him personally, will you pray with me? Jesus I believe that you are who you say you are, that you died and rose again. You are coming again for all whose faith and trust is in you. God, and I put my faith and trust in you today. God, forgive me for my sins. Lord, forgive me for going my own way and doing my own thing. And I surrender my life and my lifetime to you. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, you can go ahead and, and, and email us at iprayed@wine.family.org. We would love to follow up with you. And as we conclude with this song, it's a song, uh, it's not a song you may be familiar with, but I, I want to encourage you in a moment to stand and we're going to sing. And, and I just want us to spend a few moments in prayer. You can stay seated if you would like. But I want us to pray and I want us to make a pre-choice choice. And, and I'll just reiterate that one more it's like, you know that moment where you say, okay, I really am going to, and then you begin to do it. I want you to make a pre-choice choice that this year you're going to experience God in a way that you never have. 
that you're going to, regardless of where you find yourself on the spectrum in the relationship with God, that you're going to be open to everything that he has for you, everything that he wants to do in you, and everything that he wants to do through you. And simply you're saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to make myself available. I want us to make a pre-choice choice that we're going to um, let the Holy Spirit empower us to be witnesses like never before, because I will share the good news. And so let's go ahead and, and sing this together, and then I'll, I'll close the gathering afterwards. I'm going to believe that we will see the kingdom come to earth. I'm going to believe that signs and wonders follow hearts that burn. I'm going to believe that sickness, sin, and poverty will cease. I'm going to believe that power from the heavens will release. Oh, let your kingdom come on earth and let your will be Jesus, I thank you that you love people. 
And I thank you that you are building your church. And I thank you that you are still empowering your, your followers, your disciples. Lord, I thank you that there's nothing that you can't do. And I pray, God, as we start off this new series through the book of Acts, God, that we would see your glory, that we would see you, God, move by the power of your spirit through your church, your people. God, that we would be empowered like never before with a boldness that does not come from our personalities or any of our giftings, but a boldness that comes only from the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would breathe your breath of life upon your church. And God, as we face, God, tumultuous times, God, that are very, God, um, challenging, I thank you that you are stronger, that you are greater, that you are wiser, Lord. And so I pray that your spirit will be outpoured afresh anew, that you would send your glory upon your people. God, so we can be a witness everywhere we go to the goodness and the grace of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's going to be a very good series. Uh, part of the reason why I got messed up in my middle of my message because I already have next week's um, done, and I, and I started transitioning my brain to the next week's sermon, so uh, that's why I got notes, to stay on track. Uh, I want to encourage you, your take home is this, um, we're going to be go going through Acts, this is more of a foundational message, we're continuing Acts chapter 1 next week, so why don't you read Acts chapter 1 um, every day this week, for the next seven days, read Acts chapter 1, and just saturate and saturate in Acts chapter 1. Um, and uh, tonight, I'm excited in Roots, we're, we're doing a different series, completely different, but we're, it's called Dunamis, and we're going to be doing a new series on the, on the Holy Spirit and uh, Roots tonight as well. And um, if you have any questions about the Holy Spirit, we're doing some classes starting next Sunday night. Actually, Pastor James said, don't call them classes because he wants them to be very conversational and interactive. So he said, he says, I don't want to stand up there and talk for 45 minutes. And so... Um, it's going to be a very engaging opportunity for you to ask questions. And so the next three Sunday nights, not this Sunday night, but the three Sunday nights after that, we're going to have prayer and discussion on the Holy Spirit. So uh, we're just going to grow together. So God bless you. Have a great rest of your Sunday.